Um, hello, I am uh, Nicolas uh, Molina, and uh, I'm going to talk about how I used Home Assistant in a factory. And well, first, I, I got into Home Assistant because uh, my wife is an architect and started investigating a little bit more about, um, um, about lighting and circadian lighting, change the color of the lights according to the day. Then I also wanted to control the climate and uh, control the um, uh, blinds and, and all, those, all those things. And then I started finding out that every device and manufacturer had a different app and uh, it, it was awful. That's how I think most of you found the Home Assistant because you want to integrate everything, not use a different app for, for everything. And uh, then, uh, Looking through um, the model, the change logs in Home Assistant, I noticed there was a Modbus integration, and um, I realized that there existed a Modbus integration. There was a change about it. Um, I work in a brick factory where I automate and uh, build uh, new machines, and uh, we were using a very old uh, control software, uh, which was called uh, Topcapi. Um, it is so old it has 16-bit uh, code in it. Um, it has uh, limits to how many variables I can read from, um, from the industrial devices, from, from the PLCs, the Programmable Logic Controllers, which are overrated ESP boards. And uh, also the software, the only way to access it was uh, over remote control to, on the computer in which it was uh, running. Um, I wanted to add more PLCs and I needed more, um, um, more variables. And um, the update to the, the software was just as old as the older version we were using. So I said, well, I'm going to try, I'm going to try to use this Modbus integration in Home Assistant and let's see how it works. First, I'm going to explain a little bit about Modbus. Uh, it's a protocol created in the, in the late 70s and it was then openly published and is royalty free. Um, it was created by, um, by um, Schneider Electric and uh, it is now an open standard. The thing is, it was created so long ago that it still has a very old um, mechanism how it works. It is a master-slave client-server system where um, one device has to continually ask for updates to the device that has the information. It can't, uh, the device that has the information can't send new uh, information and uh, it has to uh, wait until it is asked to send the information. All the information is stored in just 16-bit registers. It's a really old system. And there are two main variants. There are about seven, but the main ones are Modbus RTU, which is a serial bus, which works in Home Assistant, but you need a bus adapter and a wire which goes from one device to the next and to the next. And there is the Modbus TCP version, which uh, came around when uh, Ethernet was more used, when Ethernet was um, more reliable. And it just is the same instruction uh, sent within a, um, an Ethernet uh, package. And uh, it's a very small register in a, complete, in a complete Ethernet package. And the Ethernet package is um, not very used. It's a, uh, it's a total packet, Ethernet packet, with one little uh, packet uh, within it. So uh, I started uh, the trying it out. And uh, Home Assistant needed to talk to, to these devices, which I have uh, many of them in, in the factory. And I started using the, the configuration that was uh, uh, available on, uh, on the on, uh, Home Assistant uh, website. And I started configuring. Um, uh, in configuration.yaml. I configured switches, um, climate devices, I configured uh, sensors and binary sensors. Um, the problem I found was that um, I used to scan, um, which um, the, the master has to request the information each time from the server. So I started scanning uh, very frequently. Normally in, in, in a home, you have updates from your sensors every 60 seconds or, or once every minute. I needed uh, much more frequent updates. And when I started implementing a lot of sensors, which I usually use in the, in the older software, 
uh, it started be getting very slow. I started having uh, problems uh, where in the log it was uh, saying that um, uh, it took too long to respond to the, to the queries I was uh, uh, sending. So then I found that uh, Node-RED has an integration for Modbus TCP. And uh, how I um, improved uh, the, in using um, in, uh, in Node-RED is I can uh, set different scan intervals uh, for each uh, uh, variable I want to read. But I can, um, instead of requesting one variable, I could request everything. The PLC would send everything back, and I would sort it out in uh, in uh, Node-RED into separate variables. And that was uh, a lot faster because instead of sending um, 1,000 um, uh, requests uh, per second to, uh, to a PLC, I would send one request which would uh, give back 1,000 variables and then the computer would split up all the variables in, uh, in uh, Node-RED. But I still use uh, switch and climate within the configuration.yaml from Home Assistant because they automatically send back the information, the, the orders when, when I change something, when I start something or I stop something in the, in the PLCs. And uh, well, um, when I uh, uh, enabled so many variables, um, it was no longer a problem of, um, of uh, reading these variables and the PLC is getting slow because I was asking, uh, making too many requests. The problem started to, to become uh, the, the machine I was running Home Assistant on. I was using a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, so I installed a VM on a, on a larger machine. That wasn't enough uh, either. I had to put a dedicated SSD on that machine. And I had to uh, send all the sensor data, which was uh, being read at approximately one second to five seconds intervals, uh, to be stored directly in InfluxDB and uh, the rest of the home assistant information to be stored in, uh, in MariaDB, which was uh, way faster. I also had to lower the log level from, from home assistant because uh, there was a time where suddenly I had a 60 gigabyte log um, from all the, uh, maybe the log le level was too low, but in two days I had 60 gigabyte uh, log file. And now uh, in this configuration, I'm running, I'm connecting to seven PLCs, reading about 1,200 uh, uh, variables. I have uh, three cameras with object recognition with using DeepStack. And I also, I also read all the information from the network and the presence detection data. And I also started using ESP home boards, ESP32 boards using Tasmode and ESP home. And uh, it, works, it works really fast now. It, uh, it had some growing pains because I was doing a lot of requests, maybe using the incorrect database for so much information. Because not only I receive information every second, I also store it for a, for a very long time. I store it for a year, the old information. And well, the advantages of using now Home Assistant in a factory instead of using the old software I use is um, first, web access. Home Assistant has a very nice, uh, web UI, which is configurable. Um, I can mix all the industrial data I used to have before, the graphs about the information of sensors, but I mix it with um, IT data. I can mix it with all the uh, network usage. I can have camera feeds within the U same UI. Um, I have even started making automations based on uh, personal presence detection, which is usually used for, for homes to turn off the lights when someone arrives. I started um, uh, preheating machines when some of the operators uh, arrived on the factory because first they go um, change clothes and everything. But and so I have about 10 minutes to start preheating the machines and preparing the machines. There are areas where there is a lot of uh, condensation. So we, we vent these uh, areas before someone has to enter the, uh, them. That also saved a lot of time. That the, Those are things that only Home Assistant, I believe, can, can do because it mixes uh, so much uh, different types of information. Also, I started using ESP home devices, not only um, the usual PLCs, old PLC systems, which are incredibly reliable. So I only started using ESP home for things that aren't critical for the operation of the, of the factory. For example, um, uh, using it only for um, um, electricity measurement, gas measurement, water usage measure, measurements, and 
Although in home assistant, I can now uh, integrate and export accounting data. I can um, every um, uh, given time I export um, gas usage to um, uh, an Excel spreadsheet, which uh, logs the exact uh, consumption of each um, um, oven uh, kiln uh, wagon that uh, goes through the through the oven. So I know exactly how much gas each uh, each piece of brick has uh, required to burn, and uh, that's that's awesome. Makes him er everything that uh, on before had to be done by hand. And things I am planning to do now is using the NFC tag tracking. Since you have have um, integrated, I, I recently saw that uh, NFC is a new thing in, in Home Assistant. I wanted to track all these uh, drying wagons and all the, also the firing wagons, add NFC tags on them and use um, NFC readers everywhere. So um, uh, operators or also automatically, I can uh, know exactly which um, uh, wagon has passed at, at what time uh, where. I can track, uh, track the wagons. And I am trying to um, implement Modbus RTU on ESP32 boards to connect devices which are very far away. I have some devices that are 300 meters away. Um, I have Wi-Fi there, but it would be very long to connect uh, that cable to a PLC that is nearby. So I'm trying to make an, an ESP home uh, client to read from, uh, from several devices with uh, Modbus RTU. And I'm also trying to uh, do HMIs, uh, little screens, human machine interfaces to, for people to control machines in the factory using a simpler, uh, uh, maybe a tablet, maybe using Nextion uh, uh, screens with, with an ESP32. And I'm also uh, experimenting with using other industrial protocols. Modbus TCP is tremendously old. And I was trying to get to work um, Ethernet IP and Profinet, although in the PLCs I use from Schneider Electric, their implementations aren't as good. And I was also uh, reading about um, installing IoT protocols on the PLCs. There are now uh, some uh, uh, PLCs that include MQTT and HTTP, but so far their implementation is, is uh, it's almost uh, unusable. <laughs> And well, that's all I was trying to, to do in uh, using Home Assistant in, uh, in a factory.